Hello and welcome to this week's Midweek Devotion. Today, I would like to encourage you, I'd like to encourage myself, I'd like to encourage all of us with once again giving our lives to, or for the first time giving our lives to fully engaging, fully pursuing, passionately prioritizing the presence of God. I want to say that the presence of God is the critical need of this hour. It has been the critical need of every hour since the beginning of time, and it will be certainly the critical need of the season and the seasons ahead. I want to say that no amount of time spent pursuing the presence of God is ever wasted, because His presence is Him, and that is everything. I'm going to read a few parts of Psalm 84 and then just say three things about the presence of God. Verse 1, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Verse 4, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is found in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, which is the valley of despair, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. And in verse 10, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. I want to say that I don't believe it's any mistake that sandwiched in between my heart and my flesh cry out. And better is one day in your courts is a people who go into valleys of darkness and turn them into springs of life. We are those people. The capacity to be those people, the capacity that would sustain us is found in these two things. My heart and my flesh cry out and this better is one day in your courts. When we seek his face, we set the world on fire. I want to say that we don't seek his face to set the world on fire. We don't even seek his face for experience or encounter. We seek him because he's worthy. <laughs> I'm not going to stop the video. There are three things I want to say. The first is that it is absolutely legitimate for us to experience, to desire encounter with the Spirit of God. My flesh and my soul cry out. In the song in the, the Song of Solomon, the bride is sitting on her bed and she says that she searches, she waits all night for him. She goes into the street the next day and she goes everywhere looking for him. She's searching day and night. And then she makes the statement, when I find him, I will not let him go. I love that. I, my desire is that the body of Christ everywhere, that, that we would be those people that would search day and night and that we wouldn't let go when we find him. In the New Testament, it says, draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. I'm going to say something that is almost the opposite. We fully have him. <laughs> the second point is that we have, we can trust, we can rest in the reality that we have never known a day of our lives where we haven't had the presence of God. Most of us have just not been aware many days. I want to say that if you're a born again believer, that you have absolute access, that You've been marked with a seal of the Holy Spirit, a guarantee of your inheritance. You have the helper, the teacher. He's with us, the counselor. He is God with us. He's revealing the Father. He's revealing the Son. There is no, no distance. There is no separation. We can boldly approach Him. We fully have Him. Fully have Him. We can rest in the, in the covenant. We can rest in the truth that He's fully ours and we are fully His. These are not contradictions. The third point I want to say is that we can grab hold of Him by faith. We can determine to experience Him here and now. David says each of these things. In this song, he's, he's saying, my flesh and my soul cry out. My, my, my flesh and my heart cry out for the living God. Desire. Unquenchable desire. I have to have more. He also says in Psalm 139, I can't escape your presence. If I go there, if I go to the darkest place, I can't escape you. He's fully aware that God is with him everywhere. Then in Psalm 16, at the end of Psalm 16, he makes this statement, I set you always before me by faith. He sees, he grabs hold of him. 
he turns these eyes upon him. I want to say that it's like marriage. Two people are in a covenant. They fully have each other. They have a relationship. They have total access. There is nothing standing between them in a healthy marriage. It doesn't negate the need, the absolutely critical beauty of and need for pursuit, for continual pursuit of each other, for continual desire. And two people can miss each other in a marriage. It takes some grabbing hold of each other. It takes some being present in the moment with each other, setting each other before each other. These are not mutually exclusive. These don't cancel each other out. These are not contradictions. I dare you today, at the end of this video, at some point in time, to just get lost, a little lost, in meditating on these three realities that are all yours, 